Uh, let us see the uh, in the session uh, what Matthew Arnold concentrate on estimates that is judgment assessment test how do we test the worthy of any sort of writing and how do we judge the person who is worthy or unworthy uh, in this uh, background matthew arnold is going to deal with the three estimates of poetry let us see that then arnold says that uh, a dubious classic must be shifted and exploded and a genuine uh, classic must be appreciated for its high character based on what he calls real estimate i uh, repeat it once again listen he says that dubious classic must be shifted or exploded and a genuine a classic must be appreciated for its high character based on what he calls real estimate in the real estimate we should not be flaccious we should not be prejudiced we should not be biased we should be sure of the fact and we should appreciate what is best and we should uh, reject disapprove what is worst therefore the critic should be careful enough while judging and assessing the work of art the advice of matthew arnold is to be a dubious classic unworthy classic should be shifted and it should be exploded only genuine classic must be appreciated for high character based on what he calls the real estimate arnold says if it is a real classic if its work belongs to the very best class then the great things for us is to feel and enjoy is work as deeply as ever the best classics makes the readers to feel and enjoy the work naturally without any bias this is how real estimate should be we can and uh, to appreciate the wide difference between uh, it and all work which has not the same higher high character we never always expect uh, all the writing should be at one standard there shall be some differences there should be two but uh, a writer can write but a critic should identify the worth of the uh, writings to arrive at the actual estimate arnold suggests comparison as a tool of criticism the best and the most delicate lines of a classics are used as a touchstone to see whether they work in front of a critical measure or not that is uh, to take uh, specimens of poetry of the high 
and the very highest quality to say characters of high quality poetry are what is expressed there and to uh, look them in the work of an author before passing our judgment Arnold uh, I told you in the first part of the study of poetry itself uh, there was a, a, a long survey uh, made by Matthew Arnold that survey of his journey started from Geoffrey Chaucer of 14th century to the romantic moment it ends with uh, Robert Burns he studied uh, hundreds of uh, the poets and their poetry and he could uh, find the estimates it helped him to find all kinds of uh, writings and how they should be uh, appreciated Right. In the second part, we find Arnold's survey of English poetry in which he begins uh, with his uh, prize of Chaucer's excellence in poetry. Geoffrey Chaucer was a wonderful writer, a father of modern English poetry, as Dryden uh, says. Uh, he was such a great uh, pioneer of modern English poetry, uh, literally speaking. And uh, he uh, appreciated uh, Chaucer's excellence in poetry. Chaucer's poetry has the truth of substance and it is a high criticism of life because in it we get a, a seizable, free, sound uh, representation of things. Uh, you could find some uh, uh, the genuine qualities in the Chaucer poetry, there is a truth of substance and high criticism for life and seasonable free sound representation of things. But says Arnold in uh, his poetry lacks high seriousness of a great classics. Arnold, he did the two things, both uh, the strength and weakness of a writer and quality, appreciated the quality and uh, he, that is a disapprove uh, the the weakness and minus points lacks of high seriousness uh, of great classics then Arnold gives him a credit for style and manner on states uh, there was a wonderful style and manner of his presentation of the uh, poetry it was uh, highlighted by uh, Matthew Arnold it was the view of uh, Arnold on Geoffrey Chaucer with him was born a real poetry. It is what uh, uh, quoted by or advocated by Matthew Arnold. Speaking about uh, uh, the great poet. With him was born a real poetry. Writing about Elizabethan age and Wilton, he says the Opinion is uh, unanimous regarding Shakespeare and Milton's high quality of poetry. Uh, when he uh, assessing the great uh, the quality of the great writers of the Elizabethan age, that is Milton and that is William Shakespeare, he had high words on them. He tells, with him was born a real poetry. While he was speaking about uh, uh, John Milton. And uh, he has a great uh, opinion and uh, that is the faith on Shakespeare to for his equality of poetry. He declares uh, the real estimate uh, here as universal currency. Real estimate uh, is a universal currency. It means uh, what, what uh, Arnold wants to say is that real, real estimate can be uh, accepted and respected by all the people of the world. It is not personal. There is no any uh, confinement on real estimate. Later, in the age of Augustans, uh, in an 
extended discussions of Dryden and Poe. Arnold concludes that they are admirable for purposes of uh, inaugurators of our age. That is, uh, um, Dryden and the Probe were the, the writers of uh, prose and reason of uh, that is a uh, neoclassical period. Asserts that uh, neither Pope's was nor Dryden's as high seriousness and they are classics of English prose. Therefore, Arnold says that the writings of Dryden and uh, Pope were the, uh, well regarded and with them prose is uh, that is uh, presented well and uh, it has got the right place in the history of English literature. Therefore, age of Pope and Dryden was the age of prose and reason uh, during uh, their uh, period. Arnold remarks about uh, Gray and Burns. Uh, what he says about uh, Thomas Gray and Robert Burns. Here again, he stumbles uh, with his uh, criteria for evaluation when he, re when he elevates G G Gray and accords him a place for a place of honor and calls his poetry classic, though he qualifies uh, his uh, statement. Uh, he is the sanctest uh, and uh, uh, faintest of classics in our poetry, but he is a classic. Writing about Burns, he laments that though in Burns' poetry there is an application of uh, ideas of life, his poetry still falls short of high seriousness of classics. Coming to the poetry of major dramatic poets, he says that contemporaries are bound to come up with personal estimates with passion. After an extraordinary climb for touchstone method, as a decisive parameter for evaluating poetry and applying it on some British poets from Chaucer to Burns, he concludes hoping that method will go a long way in evaluating the work's appreciation. Uh, now let us, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, highlight uh, a few uh, 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 views, uh, brief views uh, on uh, three estimates. The study of poetry is a classical essay by Matthew Arnold. In this essay, Arnold criticizes the art of poetry as well as art of criticism. He talks about setting uh, our uh, standard for a high uh, poetry. Uh, we must accustom ourselves to high standard and strict judgment and there is no place for charlatanism in poetry. Charlatanism is uh, for confusing the difference between the excellent and inferior, sound and sound, true and true. So there is no place for charlatanism in poetry. There are three estimates according to Matthew Arnold, I told you already. Arnold says that uh, when one reads poetry, he tends to estimate whether it is of the best form or the worst. Arnold tells about uh, three kinds of estimates. Uh, these estimates are related to poetry and its reading. Uh, number, number one, I told you uh, already, that is just I am recalling in brief. Real estimate, historic estimate and uh, the personal estimate. Uh, let us see, uh, uh, let us recall and uh, reinstate uh, uh, the views on real estimate. Real estimate is the only uh, true estimate which is not affected by any kind of estimate, any kind of affinities, any kind of prejudice. Real estimate is the only true estimate uh, of three which is not affected by any kind of uh, uh, that is affinities. It is present in our minds and governs our estimates of what we need. The benefit of real estimate is high and uh, it is uh, the uh, benefit of uh, 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 clearly feeling and uh, deeply enjoying the real excellence, the true classic in poetry. Everything depends on the reality of poet's classic character. Arnold says uh, that 
if a poetry is truly a classic his poetry will have the reader real pleasure and enable him or her to compare with other poetry which are not the same high standard in short uh, i want to say that real estimate means actual comparison of real life and its uh, example and and its existence uh, now let us see in brief uh, uh, that is historical estimate what arnold uh, that is uh, uh, says historic estimate plays the historic context above the value of the art itself historic estimate places the historic context historical context uh, which is above the value of the art itself the historic and personal estimates uh, often uh, overshadow the real estimate but uh, arnold also says that it is natural this philosophy uh, estimate that deals with the, the poets of the past only when we are affected by the poet's historical background we may easily consider his poetry of more importance than in reality it is we must overrate it so uh, this type of fallacy caused in judgment by historic estimate in brief or in short i want to say uh, in one word that is the uh, historic estimate describes the past and its examples in poetry and let us see the the personal estimate the personal estimate uh, is a fallacy a fallacy estimate that deals with the contemporary poets our personal affinities uh, likings and circumstances have a great power to sway away our estimate due to our personal likings we give more importance to that poetry which does not uh, deserve that much importance so it is a second fallacy in our uh, poetic judgment is caused by personal estimate in short i want to say that uh, uh personal estimates are ones in which the poet uses his life and its problems uh, as an inspiration uh let us see the what advice uh, uh, made by matthew arnold uh, uh, to assess or uh, to accustom to uh, real estimate uh, how one can uh, the follow the real estimate uh, uh to meet this end you give a wonderful uh, uh, approach a common approach uh, that is uh, made by himself that is the touchstone method that is a comparative method to find uh, which poetry is best matthew arnold suggest a method known as touchstone method this method was introduced into his work the study of poetry select some best lines from the well known poetry and compare it with the great poets it is to define and evaluate uh, with a different measurement it is uh, called as touchstone method basically the method is being used to compare and evaluating some model lines from the great uh, masters of the past uh, will be used as a touchstone to test new points he quotes uh, from homer uh, in his will uh, is our peace from shakespeare if thou desist ever held me in thy heart absent thee from the fe- felicity of i and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story from milton he quoted and the courage never to submit or yield and what is hills not to be overcome these lines may be different uh, but uh, there is one thing common in them the very highest uh, poetic quality these few lines can guide us uh, properly to judge our own and other poems uh, properly touchstone method is a wonderful method advised uh, by matthew arnold while following the real estimate uh, uh, what is mainly focused in the touchstone method is that um, while uh, assessing any any work of art any any kind of poetry uh, the critic uh, should uh, that is uh, 
compare and contrast uh, the great classics of the past and with the uh, the classic uh, uh, writing quality and worth uh, and its genuine fact and reality uh, you should uh, compare and contrast and find uh, uh, whether the uh, the the quality is reflecting in the present work or not uh, is the point this is a matthew arnold uh, he uh, in the study of poetry he speaks on the the poetry and he prized poetry and uh, he speaks of functions of poetry and functions of criticism and uh, assess uh, what is the role of critic and how he is going to assess uh, in a work of art and he also made a wonderful survey from chaucer to the burns and where he had learned uh, uh, many kind of philosophies uh, and he come to the conclusion that is a uh, and uh, he uh, regarded that uh, 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 touchstone method uh, is the best method in you know, to uh, estimate uh, that is the uh, to uh, uh, assess the right or the, the worthy uh, writings as well uh, right uh, dear students uh, you have uh, i hope you have understood uh, the views of uh, matthew arnold and poetry and criticism uh, as well Uh, thank you for listening and understanding thank you very much meet in the next session in the next uh, topic thank you very much